Hey guys, for Facebook, I'm meteorologist Zach Covey, and this is your live weather update for uh, February uh, 7th, 2011. I'm not even aware of today's date, yet I'm doing the weather. Shame on me, shame on me. Today you're going to actually see my little presentation assistant widget on the side. Isn't that cool? Uh, we got a low pressure system pushing through that's bringing all this rain to the deep south, bringing that snow up north, bringing those severe storms. We even had a tornado in or uh, just north of Orlando, just south of Jacksonville, or earlier today. This low pressure system over here, in uh, okay, we'll get rid of that. Low pressure system over here in the Pacific Northwest. That's what uh, is going to bring this Thursday storm to us. But notice we've got this uh, massive cold front. That's what's uh, going to really bring in this major storm to us. That cold front's going to filter in this cold air. <coughs> so, what's going on? The jet stream's going to dip down as the uh, cold front pushes through tonight and into the day tomorrow. The jet stream's going to push down, allowing for cold air to filter in. We're going to see some snow in uh, areas like Oklahoma City, Wichita, Dallas. You're going to see an icy mix, maybe an additional inch. Fayetteville, Fort Smith, you guys could see an additional uh, one to three inches of snow. Little Rock, you guys could see an additional uh, two to four inches. Denver, definitely about uh, four to six inches of snow. Again, that high pressure going to build in. Uh, all that Arctic air, just look at these temperatures. These are actually high temperatures for areas on Wednesday. That's going to be some very cold air filtering in. Uh, we're going to only be in the uh, mid-30s for us on Wednesday, but look at some of these sub-zero temperatures in the Midwest. Just barely, a small amount of 70s right there, and then we've got some 60s in between. So we got some 60s here, we got some 70s here. So if you guys want that warm air, you guys got to go to Florida for it. Of course, we got a few people going to Orlando this week. Enjoy those nice warm temperatures. As we're going to deal with possibly another snowstorm, it all determines what happens here. Now, this is the GFS model. Notice what I'm going to show you uh, right here at the 54 mark. I'm going to pause it. High pressure. We've got high pressure in our region, 1024 millibars, 540 line right there, that blue line. So it's already south. So we already have that cold air filtering in from Canada. We've got that high pressure building in. We've got high uh, pressure right there as well. Uh, a very slight one though. Um, so it's going to start bringing in those cold temperatures. Notice the uh, storm system right here. We're going to advance just one frame to the 60 hours. Watch that storm. 66. What happened? It just broke apart. Notice right over here, South Carolina, North Carolina border. There's a small low pressure, very weak, small area of energy. Move into 72, hits the outer banks, move into 78, it's gone. High pressure builds in, 84. So, where is the snow? It wasn't there. We go into the NAM, different model. We go into the six hour mark. This is today, today, tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, this is Wednesday or early Wednesday morning, like uh, 2 a.m. Here we go. Watch that storm system. Move in, uh, what was this, 42 hour mark. Moves in tac uh, into Texas. Continues to build up. And then look, at the 54 hour mark, there's a drastic change. It doesn't fizzle out. What it does is it actually moves in to the region. It actually follows a path more through the United States instead of fizzling out in the Gulf. Move into 60 builds into the region. Notice that small area of weak energy right there. The weak energy meets up with the Midwest system and boom, massive area of snow for Hampton Roads, including the Outer Banks. You guys see some heavy snow as well. 66 hour mark, 72 hour mark, starts pushing out. 78, it's gone. We'll have high pressure rebuild into the area by the 84 hour mark, just a weak area of high pressure. Bam, GFS, NAM, two different models, two different major scenarios. Right now, the NAM looks a little more plausible, but the GFS is a better winter storm model. Now we have to balance the two. GFS, no snow, better winter storm model. NAM, not the best model, but more plausible. What do you want to balance on? Also, you have to take into account that no single model is in agreement. There are hundreds of models out there 
and no single model is in agreement. No ensemble model is in agreement, no regular model is in agreement, not even the Canadian, not even the European. The European is out to sea. The Canadian doesn't even see this storm. The Canadian has sunny skies for everybody. It doesn't even see the storm building up because it's such a weak area of energy and the phasing is so weak. GFS, you have it, but it's about 100 miles south, 100, 200. Um, and then the NAM has it and it blows up. So you've got four different big models that show nothing. And then the ensembles don't even get me started on the ensembles. So, we've got problems. What do you want to balance it on? You've got to make the decision on that. Right now, I want to go with the NAM, but I'm not going to. I'm going to stick with the GFS. And I know I'm going to get hate emails for this, hate IMs, whatever you want to do on Facebook. Poke me. I don't care. But I've got to go with the GFS because I feel like it's better at forecasting this. Now, the GFS usually loses the storm around this hour. It has in the past three storms, and it probably is doing it now. If the storm would come back on the GFS, that would happen within the next 24 to 36 hours. If the storm does not come back by tomorrow night or early, early, early morning at the midnight hour or 2 a.m. hour, we can count this winter storm out, guys. The GFS needs to come back or at least the European and Canadian model runs need to agree. The NAM needs at least one other model to agree with it, otherwise we can rule this storm system out. I give the GFS 36 hours. If it doesn't show this storm in our region within 36 hours, we can count this storm out and we'll just count for another cloudy day for Thursday. For now, that's the latest. I know I'm gonna get you know some, uh, oh, Zach, you need to make it snow, blah, blah, blah. I'm not a weather god counter to popular belief, I know, uh, but I'm not. Um, I can forecast the weather, and that's what I'm forecasting. 30% chance of snow brought it down from a 50. We'll keep watching. I'll let you know. For now, that's the latest. Live for Facebook, I'm meteorologist Zach Kobe. Have a great night, everybody.